Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. learners welcome to the session of managerial economics i am dr supriya jain working as an assistant professor in the institute of business management at gla university mathura so before we talk about the today's lecture let us look at the topics which we have discussed in our previous session and we have talked about oligopoly market we have seen the different features of this market as well as we have seen how the prices and output are been determined under oligopoly market structure through different theories oligopoly is a market where we have very few dominant players and the products which they sell can be the homogeneous products or there can be a differentiated product so if the companies who are selling under this oligopoly market structure if the products are differentiated are of heterogeneous nature then we call it as an differentiated oligopoly whereas the firms producing the same kind of products which are of homogeneous nature would be considered as an example of pure oligopoly and the most important feature of this market is that there is an interdependence of the firm that means whatever the firms decide they need to take into account the considerable impact of their change on the demand as well as the price of the uh, their competing firm so these are the basic features of uh, oligopoly market and here in this oligopoly market the demand curve is indetermined like we have talked about under perfect competition uh, the demand curve is perfectly elastic and we have shown it uh, like we draw it is uh, it is like horizontal to the x axis right it is parallel to the x axis because the demand is perfectly elastic in nature in the perfect competitive market whereas in monopoly the demand is highly inelastic because here the product does not have a close substitute and uh, here the monopoly is the single seller in the market whereas in case of monopolistic competitive market we have seen that the price is highly elastic in nature right and therefore the demand curve is downward sloping but uh, a little flatter than in case of monopoly right because here in the monopolistic competitive market there are different substitutes available but when we talk about oligopoly market here the demand curve cannot be determined because of the uh, you know products which are being sold by the players in the oligopoly market so to understand the price and output determination under this market we have talked about different models right like we have nick demand curve model which is also called as price rigidity model and the understanding of this model uh, given by professor paul suizi right according to it we can see that how price rigidity will be there in this market right it is better for the firms operating under this oligopoly market should follow a pricing strategy which has been determined by all the firms together right because if individual firm will try to increase the price the competing firm will not increase it or might not follow it so in that case that firm will lose the customer right and which represent the demand will be of elastic nature right and if the firm independently reduces the price then the other firms will follow the same right and this will not uh, give any change in the uh, demand of the consumer rather this will create a kind of a price war situation which is not beneficial for either of the firm right so in this model we have seen that the demand has a kind of a nicked shape and that is why this has been named as a nicked demand curve then we have tried to understand it with the help of price leadership model and uh, this model explain that usually the oligopoly firm chooses a leaders among them right and this leader uh, leading firm can be uh, chosen on base of different criteria maybe a firm who is uh, operating at the optimum level or producing the highest margin in the market highest output in the market or having a highest profit margin so there can be different criteria which can be used to choose a leading firm and as per the uh, you know decision taken by the leading firm the other firms will follow then we have talked about this cornot model augustin cornot gave this model and this model explain that usually uh, we consider this model in case of duopoly when there are two firms 
and uh, there are certain assumptions for the understanding of this model which we have discussed in our uh, last lecture right and this model suggested that if there are two firms and if firm one enter a firms enter into the market uh, it will enter early into the market right and will capture half of the output or half of the demand of the total demand in the market and then the other firm will also enter and they will start producing the output keeping into consideration that firm A will continue it at output what they were continue producing earlier. So, this model is basically based on certain assumption and without that assumption it will be difficult for us to understand this Cournot model and this is also applicable in the oligopoly market. But one thing which we have to understand here is whether uh, there are two firms or there are three firms or maybe four firms in the market, there will always be the output producing by all the firms will be a 1 upon n plus 1, right. So, this is how we understand this price and output determination under the oligopoly market through Carnot's model. Then we have talked about Steckelberg's model. Steckelberg model is a, a, a kind of an uh, extension given to this Carnot model where we try to find out the equilibrium right uh, the, through the Carnot model we try to find out the equilibrium and we find out which of the firm is more sophisticated right. So, the firm uh, who is producing the output in a more sophisticated manner the other firm will follow right and if you think that both the firms are trying to behave sophisticately then in that case again there will be a problem of uh, price war. So, it will always be better we will choose a firm who is behaving more uh, sophisticatedly and the other firm is going to follow the uh, firm uh, which is uh, doing better in the market or which is leading in the market. And then we have also seen this cartel model as because there are few dominant players in the market of oligopoly. So, what another way they can go ahead with is forming a cartel right they can form a cartel or they can make a collusion right where they can join together or combine together and they can also behave like a monopoly and we know monopoly is a situation where they can have a control over the supply and they can take various advantages of it right. So, what happens usually when they make a cartel or they uh, you know make a collusion in that case they determine their demand and output together, but as being they are different producers they have to produce their output uh, in their own production houses and because of which uh, there will be a difference in the cost of production. So, some of the firm will earn super normal profit or maybe some of the firms are earning only normal profit. So, that kind of a, a difference in their profit will create uh, you know differences among these firms and they might not be able to continue with these cartels for a longer period of time right and cartel can be done in two different ways also there can be a centralized cartel or there can be a market share cartel. In case of centralized cartel they, they, they make the decisions uh, you know at the central level whatever they are deciding whatever the decisions they are making they, they, they do it togetherly uh, through at, sitting at the centralized level right whereas in a market share they divide the market right uh, they, they divide the, or distribute the market shares among themselves and then they take up their own independence decisions uh, considering their own market share. Right. So, this is what we have covered in our uh, previous lecture about the oligopoly, how oligopoly market works and what are the different features uh, this market has. Right. Now, let us look at the learning objective of today's session what we are going to cover today. Right. Here in this lecture you will be able to introduce the rational behind different pricing decisions of the firm. Now, this is very important for us to understand uh, regarding the pricing right. We have understood the different uh, you know market structure, we have seen the degree of competition, we have talked about the demand and its determinants, how it affects the demand of any commodity and keeping there we have also seen the effect uh, of price because price is something which majorly affects the demand of any commodity. So, basically we are going to introduce here the pricing strategies and the pricing policies ok, so that the firm will be able to generate their revenues as well as sale. So, here the introduction of this uh, topic is behind uh, the rational of different pricing decisions which are being taken up by the firm and you will also be able to understand uh, the pricing based on different uh, you know categories that is the cost based pricing, value based pricing, perception based pricing. So, there are different kind of pricing strategies based on different categories we are going to explore. Then you will also be able to relate the product life stage uh, you know as well as the different phases of business cycle with uh, pricing decision right. 
how when uh, the product moves to the different stages. So, at the different stages, what should be the different pricing strategies, uh, uh, you know, a producer should follow and uh, looking at the different uh, cycles of the business, right, because economy faces different kind of uh, phases, there can be an expansion phase, there can be a contraction phase. So, during those phases, what impact uh, does it take on the pricing of the commodity that we are also going to uh, relate here. And lastly, we will also see the effect of administrative pricing on the general pricing policy, right. So, this is what we are going to talk here in our this class regarding the pricing strategies as well as the policy. So, le let us first start with what is meant by the product pricing. Right, product pricing you can say is basically uh, the price which a customer is going to pay for the product for which or uh, which he or she wants to buy and the price is basically that thing where the seller is ready to sell the commodity which a seller is ready to sell. So, basically what we are saying price denote two aspects right and what are those two aspects? The first is revenue to the seller right, it gives revenue to the seller because this is the uh, way they are going to generate their profit and it is the perceived value of goods to the buyer, right. And buyer is basically uh, looking at the value of that particular product and how much they are valuing because everything, the purchase of any commodity requires the sacrifice, right. So, if you want to satisfy yourself, right, and to have the utility after the consumption of goods and services, you need to make a sacrifice and that sacrifice we make in terms of money, right, and money related to the price of that commodity. So, what value that commodity is going to give you, how much you will be able to satisfy your utility, right, or your, how much satisfaction you are going to get with the consumption of that commodity is very much depends upon the value of that commodity which is related to the price. Right. So, th these are the two aspects which are being denoted by the price and we can also say that price determines the sales revenue of the firm, market share as well as the profit. Right. So, this is one decision which needs to be taken up very carefully by any, any producer because this is going to represent the value of uh, their product in the market, the market share they are going to capture and how much sales they would be able to generate. Right. Moving ahead, let us look uh, to the question then, what should be the right price for a product? That since we are going to talk about the price in detail, but how are we going to identify that what will be the right price for a product, right? How are we going to choose that correct price for a commodity? So, here the answer to this question is, if we are able to satisfy all our stakeholders, then that price should be considered to be a right price, right. So, a right price is a one which keeps all your stakeholders head happy, right. And stakeholders means all those people who are somewhere or the other associated with your business, right, or with your organization like consumer. Consumers will be happy if they got value for the money, right. Keeping that much of price of your commodity where consumer will be satisfied enough because they will feel like that they have got value for their money. Whatever the amount they have paid, at least they are able to satisfy that much of their satisfaction with the consumption of that commodity. On the other hand, we see that the sellers are also happy because they are also able to uh, generate their desired volume of sales, right. And the sales is going to give them the earning. And on the other hand, we are saying shareholders should always also be happy because they have made their investments, they have, uh, you know, invested their money. So, they are looking for higher profit. So, the right price will be the price where the stakeholders of the company are satisfied, they feel happy, like whatever is being given to them in terms of perspective of uh, customer or the seller or the stake uh, shareholders, they all are getting what they are looking for, right. So, now, let us look at the dimensions of pricing decisions. Before we talk about the different pricing strategies, let us look at the dimensions. What are the dimensions which are needed to be taken care of before we determine or decide the pricing strategy for a particular product? So, the first is a new or a modified product pricing. Yes, it is very important whenever we are introducing a new product to the market, when our product is new, Right. So, at that time we need to take care of many aspects. 
what are the things we need to take into consideration to introduce the new product in the market right uh, we have to see whether the product is having the close substitute or not or whether uh, the same kind of uh, you know product is available in the market or not so there are different considerations needed to be taken care of and not only in the case of new product when we are introducing this pricing policy has to be taken up whenever we are making any change to our existing product if we are modifying our product right maybe in terms of their packaging only right then also we need to think of the right pricing strategy to go ahead with next is a new market or a new segment right if suppose you want to enter into a new uh, new market the product is already existing but now you are exploring a new market for your product or a new market segment maybe earlier you were only targeting uh, a segment of a people from that market maybe your product is only oriented towards women and now you are targeting your product to be uh, you know uh, also uh, desirable for the men or maybe for kids right so if you are looking for a new market or new market segment then also you have to think very carefully regarding the pricing of your commodity then you have to take into account the consumer buying capacity for sure what what uh, target audience it is right are you targeting the people who are having a higher income groups or you are targeting the people with the lower income groups right so the, the buying capacity of the consumer plays a very important role and that that gives you a fair idea of how you should be going ahead with the pricing of your commodity then the objective of the firm plays a uh, important role we have also covered about the objective of the firm and the firms have different sort of objectives right some firms are uh, ob uh, they, the objective is to maximize their profit some of them are focusing on sales maximization some have the objective of growth maximization so depending upon the objective of the firm also affects the pricing policy of that organization then cost of production as we all know is a very important consideration right whatever the goods and services we are producing that involves the cost of production right and cost of production includes the cost of factors of production which we are using for the production like land labor capital entrepreneur whatever it is right so that definitely is an important consideration because uh, no no uh, you know producer is willing to sell at a price lower than the cost of production because that will give a loss to them so definitely this cost of production has to be taken into account then change in demand right change in demand is also been taken up uh, how the price uh, you know demand of that commodity is been affected with the price of that commodity and we have also understood the elasticities we have also talked about uh, how the shifts in demand curve and movements on demand curve take place what are the different factors and how these factors are going to affect the demand and here as we all know price plays a very important role right price is one of the most important determinant which affects the demand of any commodity okay and we have also seen the effect of market structure oh, right right the degree of competition since we have seen that in a monopoly market there is no substitute available monopolist is the single seller in the market so here he has this independent you know independency where uh, a monopolist can determine the prices as per his own choice and he does not have to consider much of the things because the substitutes are not available and there is no competition in the market but in case of monopolistic competitive market as well as in the case of oligopoly market a due consideration has to be taken up on the degree of competition because the products which are being sold here are are, are the substitutes right in case of oligopoly the products are, the substitutes are more close right the products are more closely associated if if there is a case of pure oligopoly right whereas in monopolistic competitive market there is a kind of a monopoly but yes at the same time there is a competition so they also have to take into account the pricing very carefully looking at the competition in the market then we have elasticity of demand yes elasticity also uh, plays a very important role because some products are of elastic nature and some products are of inelastic nature right and we have seen this factors also like elasticity depends on various factors maybe because of the nature of commodity right like we have talked about durable goods are of inelastic nature and usually the uh, you know uh, uh, recurring demand goods right the goods which have recurring demand right they are of inelastic nature because people are demanding them even them on the higher prices whereas the consumer durable goods which can be uh, which demands can be postponed for the longer period of time are of elastic nature right 
Uh, time period also plays a very important role in determining the elasticity, right? whether the product is of elastic nature or inelastic nature. We usually say the product in a short run is of inelastic nature, whereas the product in the long run will be of elastic nature. So, how this elasticity concepts help you in determining the pricing policy of your commodity and usually we say if the product is of inelastic nature, then in that case we can go with the higher pricing strategy because in that case there will not be much impact on the demand of our commodity even if the prices we are charging are high. Whereas in case if the product which we are selling is of elastic nature, then definitely we should go with the lower pricing strategy because in this case the lower the prices will be, the more will be the demand, right. And lastly, we have government policies as well, right. Government policies also plays a very, uh, you know, important role because government has two consideration, one is of subsidies and the second is of taxes, right. So, depending upon the tax policy and the subsidies they are providing to the producers, the pricing policies will get affected a lot, right. So, these are some dimensions which a person need to be taken into account before they are going ahead with the pricing policies of their commodity. Now, looking forward, we have uh, different, uh, you know, criterias like I said, we have taken different criterias for taking up the pricing policies. So, here we are going to start with the very first one, we have cost based pricing, right. And as we all know, cost is something which is very important to be taken up into account, right. Before we go ahead with the price of any commodity, we need to take into account the cost of production, how much costing uh, of the product has been charged to us and accordingly we are going to uh, price our product. So, here under this category of choice based pricing, we have cost plus which is also called as markup pricing and we can also call this as an average cost pricing method. Whereas, the second is called as marginal cost pricing. Marginal cost pricing is uh, also called as variable cost pricing and the third one we have here is target return pricing. Now, let us talk about the very first one which is cost plus pricing. It is one of the simplest way of pricing your commodity where you are considering the average cost of the commodity. I hope average cost is clear to every one of you. Average cost is the summation of average fixed cost plus average variable cost. And this is the cost we actually uh, took into account to find out how much output we should produce, where we have seen the equilibrium point also, the point where uh, marginal revenue and marginal cost of the company is equal. That is the equilibrium point and that helps us to find out how much output a firm should start beginning. But when we talk about price, we are considering this, uh, you know, uh, average cost of any commodity, that is the cost per unit, right. So, that cost we find out initially and then we add the markup to it, right. So, the basically what formula we are going to use here is to calculate this cost plus or markup pricing, we calculate it by using AC plus M, right. AC is the average cost of that product, that is the cost per unit and M refers to the markup, what markup we are going to add to it, like what kind of return we want to uh, get on that particular commodity, right. So, all these things you take into account and then you uh, decide that uh, markup, what markup will be uh, used for, uh, you, you know, what return you want, right, uh, you know, what, what uh, rate of return you are expecting on the product uh, which you want to add to the cost of your commodity, accordingly you charge the price uh, for the commodity. So, this is one of the oldest and the simplest way of using this, uh, you know, for, for uh, pricing the product of your commodity to look at the average cost of your product, right, average cost which comprises of fixed as well as variable cost both and then you add a markup to it like what all what return you are expecting uh, on your investments. So, you add that markup to it and then you determine the prices of your commodity. Then we have marginal cost pricing. This marginal cost pricing is actually related to the incremental principle. If you guys remember uh, initially we have talked about the fundamental principles in economics and there we have talked about the incremental cost, right. Incremental cost is the cost of, uh, you know, increasing cost is called as incremental cost. Whatever the change you are making in your business activity, 
right because of that uh, if your cost increases that would be called as incremental cost and here in this marginal cost principle what we are doing we usually take into account uh, for the pricing policy the variable cost not the fixed cost right so here in the cost plus pricing we are considering the average fixed cost and average variable cost both for the consideration of pricing whereas in marginal cost pricing we usually uh, do not calculate the fixed cost we keep it uh, you know we do not keep this into consideration we all uh, only calculate the cost on the basis of average variable cost what increased cost will be there right what will be the increased cost if you are going to make certain changes on the basis of that we usually keep the pricing of our commodity now this is one method which is only applicable in the short run right you will not be able to calculate or you know you won't be able to keep this pricing policy for a longer period of time because ultimately there will be a fixed cost and if you will be ignoring this fixed cost in the long run then definitely it will bring a loss to your company right so this policy is usually keep to pri to keep your prices low in the market and to enter into the market uh, where the other dominant players are also uh, playing a dominant role so if you want to enter into that market with the lower pricing policy so in that case you usually refer to the marginal uh, cost pricing right you ignore the fixed cost at that point of time and uh, make out your pricing decision based on this variable cost and that is why this is also called as variable cost pricing right but again like i said it is suitable for the short run it is not applicable for the longer period of time then we have target return pricing now target return pricing is a comparatively a little different from the cost plus pricing almost uh, the criteria which we are using here is almost similar but how we are differentiating it with the cost plus pricing in the manner where we are target pri return pricing is also considering the average cost right we calculate the average cost of that product but here the target which we are expecting are based on rationality right here we are making uh, the uh, you know markup whatever the markup we are adding to the average cost was done randomly right uh, there is no uh, kind of a consideration we are not making much irrational decisions can be taken suppose if i would like to have this much of return on my commodity or i should be getting this much of return on my product so uh, irrational decisions uh, we are making uh, deciding on the markup of that uh, return then then that is the cost plus pricing whereas in target return prices uh, the rational decisions are been made up made up by the producers or the manufacturers regarding uh, the rate of return should be there for their commodity and that usually based on their experiences that based on the consumer paying capacity and all the rational variables right so this is how a company go ahead with the different pricing policies based on the cost i hope it is clear to every one of you now moving ahead we have pricing based on firm's objective right like i discussed it earlier firm's objectives again plays a very important role and there can be different objectives of the firm for which they are operating right there can be an objective of a firm which is working for the profit maximization the profit is almost uh, you know there for every organization because without earning profit it will be difficult for the firm to continue growing right so for the growth and for the expansion of the business a uh, profit is always been required but yes looking at your objective for what objective you are running your business that will be different right so some people are running their business only for the maximization of their profit some of the people are running their business so that they can have more of sales maximization rather than looking at the profit and because of change in the modern management right because we have different uh, identities in the people owners are different from the managers right management plays a different role so here managers looks more of the maximization of profit because that will help them to have better salaries in the market right uh, right and then we have growth maximization also we have managerial utility maximization also i hope all of you remember the theories which we have discussed in our previous sessions but now for here pricing based on firm's objective we have two uh, you know objectives which we are keeping into consideration if suppose the firm is having an objective of maximizing profit right they they only want to have profit maximization so in that case usually the firm go with the cost plus pricing or the target return pricing because here they have this some kind of a target in their mind 
which they actually want on their uh, you know on, on their product ok. So, they go ahead with the cost plus pricing where they look at the average cost of the product, what is the total cost they have incurred and what kind of markup they want to add to it for their returns in the uh, profit ok or the target return they set. Whereas, for the sales maximization because the objective here is to increase the sale of the commodity and the sale of the commodity will be increased if the prices are low and on that lower prices if larger demand will be there. So, usually they go with this marginal cost pricing right, they usually follow this marginal cost pricing where they for the some time ignore the full cost and they only keep into account the variable cost of the product so that they can keep the lower prices of their commodity or their product and with this lower prices they would be able to maximize their sales right. So, depending upon the firm objective pricing policies used by the different firms can be different. Then another criteria can be the competition, yes this is a very important criteria the degree of competitions right and degree of competitions we have already discussed in our different market structures we have seen that different markets have different sort of competition like in perfect competition right uh, competitive market uh, large uh, large number of buyers and sellers are there but yes in perfect competition we usually not talk about this pricing decision because the firms working under perfect competitive market are the price taker right they take the prices from the market forces with the determination of demand and supply but when we talk about monopoly monopolistic competitive market and oligopoly market they are all price maker right. So, without considering the competition right, without looking at the degree of competition they are having they cannot determine the prices of their commodity. So, here we have three uh, you know ways or you can say strategies through which the prices can be determined. The first is called as penetration pricing. Now, penetration pricing is that kind of a method where a firms try to keep very low price initially for their commodity so that they would be able to enter into a new market and this has been uh, used by those companies where there are already the dominant players in the market and if you are willing to enter into this market and to inc uh, you know to have a sale for your uh, demand for your commodity you need to keep your prices low so that people can shift their demand to your product right and here we can take an example of reliance right reliance uh, the you, you, you can see the revolution or the change taken up by the reliance in the telecom industry where BSNL used to play a very dem dominant role right. So, by keeping the prices low they enter into the market and they have made a lot of change into that market. The another example can be Nirma, Nirma also used this penetration pricing policy because the market which was largely captured by the uh, Hindustan Labor Limited right. So, the Nirma when they enter into the market they opted this penetration pricing policy where they have reduced their prices considerably and kept their prices based on the marginal costing so that they will be able to enter the market and capture the uh, you know demand in the market. Then we have another policy which is called as entry deterring pricing right entry deterring pricing if you guys remember this is the policy usually taken up by the oligopoly firms right and we have seen that in this market though there is no restrictive entry but still they create a barrier for the other player to enter into this market right and how do they uh, you know use this pricing policy they they basically uh, uh, they basically uh, the uh, the firms operating under this uh, part they are operating their business at a larger scale and we have seen that working on the larger scale companies get economies of scale and because of these economies of scale they were able to reduce their cost of production their per unit cost of production reduces right. So, they usually keep those prices for their product where they do not allow anybody to enter into the market because if anybody else wants to enter into the market they would not be able to uh, you know provide that commodity at a lower prices which they are already offering right. So, nobody is able to enter into this market because of the prices which you are providing in the market that means you are uh, you know stopping others to enter into this market ok and this is called as entry deterring pricing where you are creating a barrier for the other companies to enter by providing the product at a lower prices by operating at the large scale and usually this happens in the oligopoly market. Then we have going rate pricing. 
going rate pricing I, I hope this is clear to every one of you with the name itself as you can see we have uh, you know juice uh, packets having the similar prices for different companies or you can talk about the pasteurized milk why the mineral water uh, of different companies usually uh, labeled with the same prices because here uh, people those who are entering new to the market they do not want to get into any kind of difficult situation right so they usually follow the same pricing strategy which has been followed earlier by the competitors right and there are different reasons for doing it because they know their product are very close substitute so if they would be uh, you know using the different pricing policy then how much shift there will be in their demand curve they are not clear with that so usually they prefer to go with the same price which is already there in the market and to stop any kind of a price war they follow the same pricing policy which is already there which is called as going rate prices so these are the different prices which we are uh, considering based on the competition in the market penetration pricing policy where the firms try to enter with a very low price and and then try to create their market uh, share in the uh, you know market demand for their product right and we have taken the example of reliance to make it understood right how how they have tried to change the market of india in the telecom industry right then we have entry, de entry deterring pricing entry deterring prices is that policy where usually large firm keep the lower prices of their product so that they does not allow any new player to enter into the market and going rate pricing says that here the firms they enter into the market but they usually keep the same pricing policy which is already there in the market right now let us look at the another category where we have product life cycle based pricing as we all know each and every product has their own life cycle as it has been shown here we have shown here the four phases of any product right based on the time period when the product was introduced initially right so that is basically the introduction phase where the product is new to the people and many of them are not aware of right this is the stage where the product is been introduced right and then is the growth rate this is the growth rate uh, and where the people are aware of the product by the sort of advertisement or the sales promotion techniques you have made that product uh, known to the people and the people are ready to buy this product so this is basically the growth period where where you are able to see the lot of demand for your commodity right then there comes a maturity phase which is also called as saturation phase right here in this stage the products mature and and you know uh, it demands also become stable so here you use some kind of techniques where you try to attract people to your product by using some sales promotion techniques right by giving them buy bank discount or you you provide them different kind of offers right so so that you would be able to stabilize the demand for your product and then comes the declining phase here in this phase the products demands goes down as because there is no uh, you know uh, further attraction towards the purchase of that commodity right so there can be a declining phase and then uh, you, as we all know all the companies are working very hard on the research and development of the commodity so if they are adding something new to that product during this maturity or stabilization phase then definitely they will uh, you know not able to face this demand uh, phase declining phase and they will able to create a better demand for their product in the market so this is about the product life cycle now what we are going to understand here is let us look at the pricing decisions which are being made based on the different cycle or based on the different phases of the product and during this life cycle so the very first uh, is called as price skimming the very first policy is called as price skimming and here in this uh, you know method what has been done usually when the product is new to the market right when you have come up with any innovative or new product in the market then you use this policy which is called as price skimming policy where you keep your prices very high in the market and there are customers right here using this policy you need to take care of that there are people who are ready to pay higher prices for the commodity so as they could be able to uh, create their social status in the market remember the example of mobile phone right when new mobile phone came into the market with the camera and with all the other features earlier they were not there so they were charged very high right and usually this happens with those products which are new to the market uh, the kind of technology they are coming up with right is new to the market and people are ready to pay higher prices for these commodities right so price screaming is one such method 
where usually the higher prices are being charged right uh, to, to basically to take the skim of the market right and then you would be able to generate more profit during those phases of the commodity. You can also take the example of uh, you know movie. Uh, uh, latest movie which comes up right so usually what happens for the very very uh, initial days right when the movie was released so initial days the price of the movie ticket will be higher as compared to uh, the price which we charge for the later days so here we are also representing this graph which represent this price skimming right so here this this particular line is basically representing that demand is inelastic during this period because this is the steeper demand curve and this this curve represents that demand is uh, of elastic nature because this demand curve is a little flatter right so when we are charging the higher prices what we are saying the demand for our product is of inelastic nature because here the product is not being considered or the prices are not being considered much uh, so there are customer who are ready to pay the higher prices at uh, for producing the quantity of that commodity definitely the number of consumers are lesser but yes they would be able to uh, buy the commodity at the higher prices okay so this uh, is a inelastic demand curve whereas when the product become uh, you know common in the market and when uh, you know uh, we, we, we can reduce the prices to attract more customer to our demand uh, to the demand of our commodity so we, we see that the demand is also having this elastic curve where we are selling the commodity same commodity after a period of time at a later pri lesser price so that we can have more customers to buy that commodity right so this is how uh, the different pricing uh, methods can be used at different stages of a product okay so this is your uh, price skimming policy then we have product bundling product bundling is basically uh, being done when when you are bundling your product with the another product or packaging right you are bringing some kind of change to your product or you are bundling your product with the another product where you would be able to uh, you know uh, and this is usually done at the stage of maturity when your product reaches to the maturity level and does not have much demand so what you do is you bundle your product with the another product which gives an impression to the customer that they are buying only one product or they are paying for one product and in, 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 in return they are getting two products right so that definitely helps you stimulate the demand of your product in the market right so product bundling is a way where you are providing two products to the consumers at one prices of course the price of the another product has been included but yes definitely uh, when you are doing these things this will also helps in promoting the another product maybe which you have started new product which you are uh, you know giving as in complementary to your previous product and consumer might feel that here they are getting two commodities at a single price right then we have perceived value pricing also which is also called as psychological pricing right in this what happen usually the people uh, the producers create that kind of a value image of their product in the market so the consumer perceive the value of that commodity and accordingly they are ready to pay for those prices which is also be called as psychological prices like we can take an example of uh, tanesh jewelry we can take an example of uh, titan watches right so all these uh, branded have created their value in the market right even if their product uh, you know cost is not uh, that much because here the uh, cost is not based on the cost of production the price is not based on the cost of the production the price is based on the perceived value of that product right so how much branding you were able to do for your product so that the consumer have perceived that value for your commodity and ready to pay the prices accordingly so here you can definitely charge higher prices for your commodity if the perceived value of that commodity is higher in the market then we have value pricing now value pricing is a little uh, you know different from this perceived value pricing what happened here in this case usually the producer creates a value for their product definitely in the market but at times they are also providing uh, this product at a lo lo lower prices right so what what is the perception of consumer here is the perception of consumer here is that product is of value right product uh, does have a value 
uh, of a of a commodity, but the prices which they are praying is comparatively lesser. And you can take an example of cotons in this uh, very easily, right? Because they have created uh, so much value of their product, uh, product. But once the person is ready, uh, you know, buying their product, they provides good discount on those products, and which gives the feels to the customer that they are buying. Uh, the valued product at the lesser prices, right? So this is a kind of a, again a psychological impact you are trying to create on the commodity uh, on the mind of the consumer, right? Perceived value here you are creating the higher value and you are also selling the product at the higher price. Whereas in value pricing you are creating the value of the product but you are providing that product on a value price, right? Where they are feeling that as if they are paying value for their money or they are getting value of their money in return whatever they are buying. And then we have loss leader pricing. Loss leader pricing is usually opted by the firms who are uh, producing multiple products right where in, uh, in case of one commodity right they are charging the higher price and from the other product they are charging the low price right. So this is a loss leader pricing strategy which can be used by uh, the firms right to find out uh, if, if there, there is more demand of their, any commodity so that particular uh, product they are price, uh, pricing high in the market and the another commodity they are pricing low in the market right. So let us move to the next where we have cyclical pricing as we know in, in our economy we face different, uh, different cycles right. Uh, they, they, there are different business cycles some in, 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 uh, in we have economic expansion phase as well and we go through the uh, recession phase also. So during those different phases of the business cycle what kind of pricing strategy should be followed by the firm that we are going to understand here under the cyclical pricing. Right, expansion is the phase which we need to understand where the income of the consumer increases because the demand of the commodity increases and because the demand increases production of the good increases which generates the employment in the economy and the generation of employment gives more income right and with the higher income people can demand more of goods and services. So this is the expansion phase when economy is going upward right. And we also need uh, phases this recession phase because we are never in a single phase, right? Uh, it keeps on changing, right? And recession phase is just an opposite of an expansion phase where the demand of goods and services decreases, which reduces the production, and reduction is in production creates unemployment, and then unemployment situation will be there if then people will get less income or they are not left with any income. So again the demand will go down. So on looking at the different uh, phases of the economy there can be different pricing strategy. One is the rigid pricing strategy and the other is a flexible pricing strategy. Since we are talking about the pricing of an individual firm and we know that prices does not operate in isolation, right? We need to take into account whatever the changes are taking place in the economy and for that reason we have understood that nature of managerial economics is micro in nature but it gives an adequate importance to macroeconomics because we need to take into account all the effects which are taking place at macro level, right? What impact they are going to create at micro level. So rigid pricing policy says that uh, a firm will not get any benefit uh, by changing the prices of the commodity even if the economy goes down or economy goes up, right? So that is what rigid pricing policy says and this is uh, true for some of the durable goods also because in case if there are consumer durable goods, the demand of those goods which can be shifted, uh, you know, for future, then in that case this uh, rigid pricing policy is better because in that case if even if you are reducing the price during the recession, people will not make a purchase and they will uh, wait for further reduction in the prices. So definitely the firm will not get any benefit, right? So they can go ahead with the rigid pricing policy even in an interview with NDTV, the CEO of PepsiCo, Indra Nui, because she is taking care of FMCG products, right? She, she stated that uh, there is no change we are going to make, uh, it, it, it is better rather than not to have a flexible pricing during this expansion or recession phase, it is always better to improve on the quality of the commodity, right, to increase the sale, right. So that is what is uh, being considered to be as an rigid pricing uh, policy where the firm is not going to get any benefit by reduction or by increase in the price even if there are different phases taking place in the economy. Whereas flexible pricing suggests that flexible pricing policies can be 
taken up during the different phases of the economy because like I said during the expansion phase the income capacity of the people are more right because their income are increasing. So, again you can definitely charge higher pricing during this phase uh, you know this can be done uh, with the agriculture products also or FMCG products also because here people are ready to pay more for their demands whereas during the recession phase uh, firms should follow the reducing pricing strategies if they want to stabilize the demand for their commodity. So, that depends upon the nature of commodity again whether the firm should go with the rigid pricing policies or they should opt flexible pricing strategy for the different phases of the economy. Then let us move to the next part where we have multi product pricing. What happens uh, or what kind of decisions a firm is going to make whenever they are producing more than one commodity, when they are producing multiple products right. And this multiple pricing policy we are talking about where the firms are producing multiple products which are related to each other right. We are not talking about those companies which are into uh, conglomerate business rather we are talking about those commodity uh, those companies which are into concentric business where their products are related to each other, uh, they are close substitute of each other or they are complementary products. So, here we have three uh, you know ways of determining the prices or deciding the prices like we, ha we have demand dependence right where, where there is an demand interdependence ok. See the company which is providing the product where the demand of that product is interdependent right. So, in case of substitutes as we all know substitutes are those goods which are demanded together right. Uh, sorry they, which can be used in place of one another which are substitute of each other. So, company if they are offering substitutes of their product like Coca Cola they have uh, two substitutes Coke and uh, Coke and Pepsi. So, it is better for them to have the similar pricing policy for both the commodities because if they are reducing the price of one commodity that will definitely affect the demand of that commodity because their substitute is available right. So, you need to understand what kind of relationship is there, what kind of demand interdependence is there in your product. But if you are supplying a complementary good, if your product are of complementary nature like uh, you know you can talk about uh, uh, printer and cartridge right. So, if demand of one commodity will increase then definitely the demand for another commodity will also increase. But if the demand of one commodity will in, uh, decrease in case of complementary goods then the uh, price or demand of the other commodity will also reduces right. So, complementary goods also has to be taken into account while making this uh, pricing decision what impact it is going to create on the another commodity. So, uh, different uh, you know decisions are being taken up by the firm depending upon the demand inter, uh, interdependence and this is usually being done by those companies where the demand of their products which they are offering in the market are of interdependence nature. Then we have supply interdependence also right. There are firms who are producing different products and the factors of productions they are using uh, for the production of different commodities are almost same or similar right. Uh, the, the if, if you are you know producing maybe uh, cars right if you are producing cars. So, the production of uh, maybe uh, you know one car if you talk about Honda yeah Honda company. So, the production of uh, you know Honda city and the production of uh, this Honda Zez requires the same kind of a production process right. So, here there is a interdependence of supply. So, when there is an interdependence of supply the firm has to take into account how they are going to price their product depending upon uh, the cost which they are including in the uh, process of decision making because cost plays a very important role. But here as because you are using different product uh, uh, you know different commodities and using the same factors of production then in that case definitely you can charge different prices of your product. And here we have this Ramsey pricing policy. This Ramsey pricing policy is introduced by Frank Ramsey. And according to Fam, uh, Frank Ramsey this pricing policy was introduced usually for the government taxation purpose right where government takes uh, different decisions on price on charging different taxes on the commodity. And as per this method usually we say that government should charge more taxes on inelastic goods right. When the goods are of inelastic nature then it is always advisable for the government to charge higher taxes because here the demand is of inelastic nature even if the price of that commodity increases the demand will not decrease. Whereas, in case of uh, you know uh, 
uh, elastic goods government should keep the lower pricing strategy same is the case of the supply interdependence it is better to uh, you know charge higher price for the commodity where the demand is higher right and when the demand is lesser uh, one should charge the lesser pricing strategy then we have input output relationship also input output relationship some companies are also having their input output relationship we can also take the example of tata here tata is also producing steel and tata is also manufacturing car right cars and trucks for, and for the production of car and trucks we require steel as a raw material so here we have input output relationship so usually the companies uh, what they do is they supply uh, you know raw material to their own companies right uh, one one company uh, product is used as a raw material for the another company product right so here uh, transfer pricing is usually been used where companies are transferring their product to their own subsidiaries at a lesser prices but yes on transfer pricing there are certain rules and regulations taken up by the government because usually the companies are opting this kind of strategy uh, you know to to save their taxes right and which is not again a good practice so there are certain laws uh, there are certain regulations which are been taken up by the government to control over the transfer pricing moving ahead we have this retail pricing retail pricing can be done in different ways as well like we have every day low pricing strategy retailing is something which we already know we have two different uh, you know distribution network one is the wholesaler and the other one is retailer and retailer as we all know is in the direct touch with the customer and through this uh, you know retailer the customer uh, the product reaches to the customer so how these retailers are going to charge the prices from the customer adding their commission to that particular commodity so some of the retailers use this everyday low pricing strategy where they are keeping the lower prices of their product on regular basis and we can take an example of walmart here right and an indian company indian retailer big bazaar also get success uh, with this everyday lower uh, lower pricing strategies while operating at the large scale right and this lower price strategy is only possible when the firm is operating at the large scale when the retailer is doing the business at the large scale where they are able to reduce their uh, cost of sale and therefore they are able to make it available at the lower prices then we have high to low pricing strategies also used by the retailer where they are uh, you know selling their commodity on the higher prices on regular basis but uh, during a uh, few occasions right during the festival season they offer low prices as well to attract the customers toward their product right and then we have value pricing also though we have discussed this value pricing earlier but retailer also use this value pricing where they try to uh, you know charge the prices as per the value perceived by the consumer so that they get a feel that they are uh, you know getting return of their product uh, return of their money which they are providing then we have also these other pricing method this is the peak log pricing method which is usually been uh, done on the basis of time frame so uh, when we charge higher prices we call it as an peak load and when we charges the uh, lesser prices we call it as an off uh, peak load right so that means you as we already know different uh, you know charges are been taken up or different prices are been kept for the prices depending upon the different time frame like demand for uh, air condition is more during the summer so during summer they will be charged high and during the winters their demand will reduce so definitely at that time you can charge lower prices then we have sealed uh, sealed bid pricing strategy sealed bid pricing strategy is a kind of a pricing strategy which is usually been taken up in a market where uh, there is a situation of monopsony where we have a single buyer and lot of suppliers are there and this strategy is usually been done for the government projects where you are offering the uh, price of your commodity in a sealed envelope right but what prices you should be quoting that depends upon the price of your competitors as you don't know the price of your competitors so you always try to keep the lower prices of your product so that you would be able to get that tender or uh, the order uh, or the project of the government so that you would be able to continue with that but this is again uh, a strategy which has to be done very carefully you do not know the price of your competitor but definitely you can go and you can also look at the uh, you know strategies which they are framing so that you can get an idea and accordingly you can quote your prices then there we have the administered pricing also administered pricings are been uh, you know administered by the government government take a charge of certain prices and irrespective of the cost 
they keep into account of the price of certain commodities like sugar cane like coal in the industry right so like petrol so these are the price which are administered by the government and uh, you know uh, they 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 decide the prices what should be the prices of those commodities looking into consideration as that these are the public uh, you know utility products then we have export pricing export pricings are related to the pricing when the companies are involved into import and export when we are selling a product to the another country so here we have to take into account different considerations because uh, you know we might be uh, sure enough about the things happening in our market but when we are exporting a product to the another country we need to take account different aspects right we need to take care of uh, you know exchange rate policy the rate of currency in the different market right about the elasticity and elasticity of that product so different considerations are needed to be taken taken care of while we are talking about export pricing and how we would be able to increase our export uh, that thing has to be taken up into consideration then last we have international price discrimination and dumping price discrimination as we have also already discussed is a uh, you know art of selling the same commodity to different people at different prices and this is possible only when there are different elasticities in the market and when we are able to divide our market into two or more markets right so internationally we can also charge different prices for the commodity depending upon the demand aspects in those countries and dumping is basically referring to uh, you know exporting your product in bulk to the other country and here the perspective of doing dumping is are uh, different because people usually want to reduce their volume of output right from their country to the another country so that they can charge higher prices so this is sometimes also been monitored by the government right whether the firms are getting into the practice of dumping or not so these are some pricing methods which we have discussed right and these pricing methods i hope are all clear to every one of you how different pricing methods and strategies are being used up by the firms right to to understand what should be the right price of your product and we have talked about these different pricing method based on different criterias so i believe this is all clear to every one of you and if we look at the reference book for today's class uh, these are the reference books which are been taken up so thank you everyone Thank you.